Hello, my name is Taylor Silverduke, registered dietitian specializing in celiac disease, and today I want to talk about celiac disease and grief. This is a topic that I don't think is talked about enough, but it is so important that you are allowing yourself to grieve your life before celiac disease and grieve the changes that are happening because you are now diagnosed with celiac disease and have to live gluten-free. So if you want to talk more about celiac disease and grief, keep watching. If you didn't know, my name is Taylor Silverduke, registered dietitian specializing in celiac disease with over 10 years lived experience with celiac myself. And I help people with celiac disease become confident and self-assured in their ability to keep themselves safe no matter where they're at, whether they're avoiding gluten and cross contact at home, in other people's homes, when they're sharing a meal with a friend, at a restaurant, in an Airbnb, or when they're traveling the world. So if you need help with learning how to stay celiac safe, no matter where you're at, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for more information from a celiac specialized registered dietitian. All that said, let's get into today's topic, which is again, celiac disease and grief. First, I want to acknowledge the fact that a celiac diagnosis can bring a wide range of emotions from people feeling relieved for finally getting answers for why they've had such serious symptoms for so long to people feeling shocked and really confused because they didn't even realize anything was wrong. So there are a lot of emotions that can come about when you're diagnosed with celiac disease. And it's important to acknowledge that no matter what you're feeling, it is totally valid. I know when I was first diagnosed with celiac disease, I felt immense relief because I had gone most of my life experiencing symptoms of IBS, GI eye distress, GERD, and anxiety, and no one had answers for me except for to take a pill and I should just deal with it. And so when I got my celiac diagnosis, I felt so much relief because I finally could do something about it. But that relief quickly turned to overwhelm and confusion and over restriction. And it really left me feeling isolated because I wasn't given the proper resources to properly navigate my diagnosis. But in the beginning, I was absolutely relieved. And so whatever you're feeling, it's completely valid, completely normal. And regardless of what you're feeling, people with celiac often forget to allow themselves the chance to grieve all of the different ways that celiac disease is changing their life. And we know that with celiac disease, it's not just as simple as eating gluten-free and it's not just as simple as, you know, bringing gluten-free food to an event and everything is fine and dandy, right? Because food is not just fuel, food is comfort, food is connection, food is family, food is community. And when we have to change all the different ways that we're eating, we're changing all the different ways we interact with food in all of those ways. So suddenly connecting with friends and family over a meal looks very different from when we were not diagnosed with celiac disease. So these are all things that we are allowed to grieve and that we shouldn't skip past grieving. So how do you grieve? I'll be exploring that using the Kubler-Ross Five Stages to Grief model. So if you're not familiar, the Kubler-Ross Five Stages to Grief model includes the stage one, which is denial, stage two, which is anger, stage three, which is bargaining, stage four, which is depression, and stage five, which is acceptance. And we're gonna discuss all five of these stages and how they might show up with celiac disease, but I also wanna acknowledge that grief is not linear. So it's not like you go stage one, check, stage two, check, stage three, check, all the way up until acceptance, and you don't have to worry about grief anymore. Instead, you'll find yourself going from anger to denial to acceptance, back to anger, back to bargaining, all of these things. It's not just check, 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 and once you are our acceptance, you finally are just done. Grief often comes in waves and it's not linear and you go back and forth along the grief spectrum depending on what's going on. And that's also completely normal and something that should be normalized. So moving into the first stage of grief, which is denial, oftentimes denial is the first way that this shows up with people with celiac disease. I can't tell you how many people DM me saying that they are questioning their diagnosis, that they aren't really sure that they have celiac or that they've seen all of the data, they've seen all the test results, but they still can't grasp that they have this disease and that they really need to eat gluten-free. So denial works to help numb the shock and the other intense emotions that we might be experiencing around a diagnosis, because if you're not accepting the fact that you have celiac, if you're still unsure, if you still don't believe it, then you don't have to process all of the other intense emotions that follow. And so oftentimes, like I mentioned before, denial with celiac disease and grieving can show up as wondering if you were misdiagnosed, doubting how strict you actually need to be. Picking and choosing rules on how to stay celiac safe. Maybe you decide one thing applies to you, but the other doesn't really matter. 
Maybe it's intentionally eating gluten occasionally because you don't fully believe that you have celiac disease. Or maybe it's intentionally eating gluten in general and you're just eating gluten because, again, you don't believe that you have celiac disease. And it can also look like not being careful about cross contact because does it really exist? Do you really have celiac? Do you really need to be this careful? When moving through the phase of denial, it can be helpful to talk with a celiac specialized dietitian or doctor about the questions and concerns you have around your diagnosis to help reassure you that this is a true diagnosis this is something that you can believe and these are all strategies and these are all steps that you need to take in order to stay safe so that you can really foster that belief and that acceptance that this is the diagnosis that you have and these are the steps that you need to take in order to keep yourself healthy and safe. The next stage of grief in the Kubler-Ross model is anger. Essentially, it's just a way to deflect what we're really feeling, and it's a way to kind of protect ourselves from those intense emotions. With celiac disease, people might be angry with their diagnosis, be angry at their doctor, be angry at their significant others. They can feel angry towards a lot of different things. So anger when it comes to grieving with celiac disease can look like wondering why me, feeling like your diagnosis is unfair, anger with others who can eat gluten, anger with your diagnosis in general, and jealousy of people, other people eating gluten, which I like to describe as gluten rage. If you've never heard of this expression, it essentially is just that rage that you feel when you see someone else eating gluten that you would really like to eat. I personally experience it most often when my boyfriend is eating french fries from a fast food chain that I can't order french fries from. For some reason, it is seeing other people People eat french fries that really just makes me so jealous and angry because I can't just go to any restaurant and order french fries I have to make sure that I'm going to restaurants that specifically have gluten-free french fries and dedicated gluten-free fryers which is not as easy as it sounds and by the way if you're looking for some delicious gluten-free french fries I'm gonna leave a link to my video on where you can find gluten-free french fries in the USA so that you can go get some gluten-free french fries um, and while I know where I can go get gluten-free french fries it doesn't change the fact that I'm still jealous when Kyle gets french fries from restaurants that I I can't get french fries from so those are some ways that anger with grieving and celiac disease can show up and the next stage of the kubler ross grief model is bargaining and some of these you might see some overlap on how these different ways of grieving show up so i'm just going to throw that out there too but essentially when it comes to bargaining you're trying to regain control in a life and a world and a culture that is centered around gluten that is leaving you feeling super helpless and out of control and so bargaining is a natural way to respond to that and it can look like living by the assumption of just one bite won't hurt or living by the belief that cross contact isn't that serious or resolving that you'll get serious about living gluten-free and avoiding cross-contact tomorrow or next week or next month, or having the occasional cheat meal and eating gluten, or thinking if only I knew the risks before, if only I knew to do X, Y, Z, if only I knew to avoid Y, and also thinking if only I was tested before. If you are noticing that you're struggling with the bargaining phase and you're feeling like you're stuck engaging in unsafe behavior, especially if you're exposing yourself to cross contact and gluten, it might be helpful to me again with a celiac dietitian, a GI psychologist, or a celiac specialized doctor to kind of talk through what we can do to motivate you to still eat gluten free while processing your grief. Because it's really important that on your healing journey, you are avoiding gluten to prevent that small intestinal damage so that you can stay healthy and happy. The next next stage of the Kubler-Ross grief model is the stage of depression. Depression is often where we start to let ourselves do the deeper work with our emotions and we're actually letting ourselves feel the pain and feel those intense emotions that we were avoiding in the other stages. And like I mentioned before, it can be dangerous to get stuck in any of the stages of grief, but depression can also be especially dangerous. So if you feel like you're really stuck in the depressive state of grief, please, please, please don't be afraid to reach out to a mental health specialist, a GI psychologist to kind of help you work through it. But in the depression stage of grief, you might start to regret all of the foods that you didn't let yourself eat before. You might grieve all of the foods that are never going to be the same or grieve the experiences that are never going to be the same. When experiencing the depression stage of the Kubler-Ross grief model, it's really important that you have a strong support system that you can lean on so that you aren't feeling isolated and that it isn't something that you get stuck in and that you have the proper support to move through it. So if you're struggling with finding a support, if you feel like people just don't get it, you don't have a good outlet to express 
express these emotions, please check out the virtual celiac support group. This is a place where you can come and meet with other people with celiac disease, share what you're going through with other people who just get it, and also get your questions and concerns answered by a celiac specialized registered dietitian, me. So if you need that help, definitely check out that virtual celiac support group. And if you're moving through the depression phase of grieving with celiac disease, know that I'm holding so much space for you. I know that it's really hard to have all of these changes happen at once and it can feel really overwhelming. And so I'm sending you all of the virtual hugs. The final stage of grief when it comes to the Kubler-Ross model is acceptance and acceptance with celiac disease looks like a lot of things but before we get into that I just want to acknowledge that again acceptance isn't like that last step it's not like crossing the finish line like I mentioned before grief with celiac disease isn't linear so you'll likely reach acceptance often and still find yourself experiencing anger and depression and bargaining in other days and other scenarios as well so don't feel like you have to reach acceptance and you're a failure if you end up feeling like you're engaging in bargaining or you feel like you're depressed again. It's totally normal to move back and forth along these stages of grief. So it's not like the finish line. It is just something that you can experience while grieving. And it's not a place of sadness or happiness, but more so a place of peace at where your circumstances are landing you. So acceptance with celiac disease can look like understanding the need to live gluten-free, honoring your body by living gluten-free, buying new gluten-free foods to explore with an open mind, not intentionally eating gluten anymore, but instead intentionally trying to avoid it, not attacking your body or feeling like it's betrayed you anymore. So grieving a celiac diagnosis can be really painful. It can feel really difficult, but it's also really, really important to moving forward with your diagnosis. It can help relieve a lot of resistance that you might be feeling in managing your diagnosis. It can really help you access all of the different ways that you need to take care of yourself when it comes to living with celiac disease. It can help you honor your body's needs. It can help you honor your emotional, your spiritual, your social needs, because you have accepted the fact that you have celiac disease you've expect, accepted the fact that your life has changed, you've let yourself process those emotions, and you're ready to start learning how to make these changes and accept these changes because while you can't do everything you used to do before the exact same, you still can't do those things. It just looks different and it might involve more work, but it's still possible. And by letting yourself grieve all of those things, you can be more open to learning how to engage and interact with the world in the new ways that you need to with celiac disease. So this is how grief can show up with celiac disease. Again, if you're still in the grieving phase, I'm holding so much space for you. And I wanna encourage you to get support, whether it be from your friends, your family, another healthcare provider, or if you wanna join my virtual celiac support group, we love having new people join. And it's a really great place to come, get your questions answered from a celiac specialized registered dietitian, and also just be in an environment where other people just get it. And you don't have to explain, for example, why you felt so isolated and angry when a restaurant server rolled their eyes when you asked for a gluten-free menu. So it's a really great place to come and feel heard and get, again, those questions answered. So if you're interested, I'll leave more information down below. And also please don't hesitate to seek help from a GI psychologist or a therapist if you're really just really struggling with this. You deserve all of the support that you can get when it comes to this. This is a huge life change and your feelings are totally valid. If you like this video and you want me to create more videos that are like this, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want more information from a celiac specialized registered dietitian, go ahead and hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video.